big wedding. I wanted a small cocktail reception. I just wanted like six friends and hors d'oeuvres and my dad was like, you know, clutching his heart. And he actually said, you know, who knows how long I'm gonna live. And I, w my parents said, you know, we, we came here to make all this for you. And I was like, oh. So I got sucked into having the big fat Greek wedding. And with that, Nia Vardalis turned her real life 1993 wedding to husband Ian Gomez into a cultural phenomenon. Ah, the pensive bride. Here's the thought bubble. How can I make some money off this wedding? Nia first produced a one-woman show of the same name, and that attracted a very high-profile couple who ended up co-producing the film. Just by the title, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, I thought, that, that, I've got to go see something called My Big Fat Greek Wedding. She lived the life, now she's <laughs> seeing the show. Nia was shocked Tom and Rita actually allowed her, a relative unknown, to be the star. Right before we started to shoot, I went through the wardrobe trailer and I looked for clothes in like a size two to see if they were really gonna hire Julia Roberts and put her in a brown wig and go, freak enough. I was nervous. May I please date your daughter? No! For John Corbett, this was his time for on-screen proposals. God, that, that's such a beautiful ring. I've asked quite a few women to get married this year in the, in the movies and TV. Yeah, that's right. Finally one said yes. Hey, Angelo! Hey, Ian! We're gonna kill ya! <laughs> Opa! The film grossed more than $350 million worldwide. The following year, E.T. was on set for the CBS sitcom, My Big Fat Greek Life. Who wouldn't? Line. <laughs> How much pressure do you feel after having the number one independent film of all time. Mm -hmm. I actually don't. I don't, maybe I'm just a fearless idiot. Despite its debut as the number one new sitcom, the show was canceled after one season. 14 years later, fans finally got their big screen sequel. You all want to do this? Of course yes. we do. Thank you. I called John first. Who would have been the last one that found out? Probably Joey Fatone. Everybody, yeah, everyone called each other. So by the time I called the third person, they were like, I know. This time around, the Portacalis family heads back to their roots in Athens. We're going to Greece. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four. Nia wrote and directed this third and final installment, which is in theaters now. I loved directing. It was very, very fun because everyone's like a family. And so I expected them, like, if I were like, okay, you're going to move over here, I kind of thought they'd be like, no, you know, because it's like directing your cousins, but they were wonderful. 